Do you know what they call alternative medicine that's been proven to work? Medicine. Welcome to the Holistic Healing Collective Podcast, a show about energy healing, holistic, and plant medicine. Our passion is healing on all levels. You'll hear guests from doctors, yoga teachers, energy healers, researchers, coaches, and real people who've recovered from serious debilitating health conditions, getting to the root of the problem and solving it. And this is not medical advice. Welcome to the Holistic Healing Collective Podcast. And now your host, William Dickinson. Hello, and welcome to this episode of the Holistic Healing Collective podcast. Today, we have our lovely guest, Victor Cosetto. Thanks for coming, Victor. How are you doing? My pleasure. Thank you for having me. It's, it's our pleasure, too. So Victor is a nutritionist. He's certified in the Emotion Code as a practitioner. He is also a holistic practitioner and has a background in computer science. He had a undergraduate work that he majored in computer science and graduated with a double minor in psychology and sociology mm -hmm. from the University of Maryland. He's also a practitioner and advocate of energy healing and electric medicine, which I'm very excited to, to hear about. So I'm sure we will have a, a great discussion on that. Okay. So okay, it sounds good. Yeah. yeah so I want you to, to, to take the wheel. So tell us a little bit more about about this i'd really be interested how did you actually get into this because these are some very specific and interesting niches uh yes well it's it's a very long story so i'll try to make it as short okay. as possible um so i i've been into health since i was like a teenager just a natural curiosity you know i'm, I'm kind of a geek mm -hmm. so i just love science and the, the kind of mainstream medicine and narratives just didn't really make sense to me. And uh, so over time, like, you know, I, I dove into like shamanism and Ayurvedic, you know, all the different cultural perspectives on healing and health. And I, my, my passion from when I was young, from high school, actually, I was a computer programmer. And I kind of got into the idea of like hacking through the information what's really going on behind the scenes what we you know when when a lot of information starts coming out onto the internet and if i jump far forward um since you're curious about like the electric medicine and stuff sure i had actually started hearing a lot of things about colloidal silver about you know, 20 years ago maybe more and i started to see like these you know like these negative comments but when I really hacked through the information to find the sources of that, it usually led to like pharmaceutical companies or people with ulterior motives. And so that, I just kept jumping down those rabbit holes. And then it led to other things like, uh, if, you, if you look even back in, in history, we will see that like silver was used for thousands of years, the Greeks, the Romans, et cetera. Um, and you'll also find electric medicine goes back thousands of years. Like people would put their feet in water with electric eels to treat arthritis, right? So you, you found all these crazy things. And so I really, rather than relying only on, um, you know, modern day trials, right? I like to look at actually the anecdotal evidence throughout history you know, to, to get a balance, right? Because when we look at our modern science, uh, the, you know, whatever we see, whatever trials or reports or statistics we look at it today, probably 10 years in the future, there's going to be more things that are showing how this was incorrect, right? So we, there, there's a lot of bias. Um, I don't know if you know the expression, statistics never lie, but liars use statistics. <laughs> I've heard it. Yeah. So, you know, you, you in our modern world, you you tend to find whatever it is you're looking for because you will skew your perspective. People will skew the data. Um, and so I, I try to always maintain a larger perspective. So anyway, my, my curiosity led me to discover uh, many different things, old and new. And then I started to use things. Uh, colloidal silver was one of the first things that I really got into uh, where I experienced like a miraculous 
kind of effect from that. And then that, and, and if you, and again, studying led me to like the work of Dr. Robert Becker, uh, the body electric. Mm -hmm. And then you get into the whole idea about uh, the body uh, being electric. And again, going further into electric medicine, Dr. Bob Beck, very similar name, but different person. Um, he, in the 1990s, he was going around explaining one of the most powerful protocols for healing, uh, now known as the Beck Protocol, and it uses blood electrification and magnetic pulsing. Nowadays, magnetic pulsing is very trendy as PEMF, mm -hmm. pulsed, right? Um, but he was doing this in the 90s. And so I started doing this like 15, 20 years ago. And again, the results are miraculous. And so uh, these kinds of things, like, like the Beck Protocol, the electric medicine, I've always kind of reserved for emergency uh, situations, terminally ill people, people that have like terminally ill cancer, et cetera. Although I did the whole protocol myself and it was, it was amazing. Since that time, so in the, in the last 15, 20 years, I, I don't feel like I've been bedridden. You know, I haven't been taken out of action by mm -hmm. anything serious. Um, I did get food poisoning a couple of times, which is not pleasant, uh, you know, as I've traveled the world and such. But those things too, I can recover from quickly. Yes, yes, sickness is part of health. I don't think it's ever yes, about right. abstaining fully from being sick. It's about being able to have a strong immune response get over it quickly, get back to being alive and living your, your fruitful life. Yes, right, right, 100%. Um, yeah, like I like to remind people that, you know, people would get sick with the flu and they would be in bed, like bedridden for a week, feeling like they're dying, but had no fear of death. Mm -hmm. Because it was like a normal exactly. thing that people went through all the time. And then they would brag about it. Oh my God, yeah, you know, I was like dying. I, you know, I, I was delirious for a week, but there was no fear no panic, et cetera. Now that, that concept, that idea of fear also ties very closely into what I work with. So in my teens and early twenties, and, and actually in college, I studied PNI or psychoneuroimmunology, mm. which is the study of how your state of mind affects your immune system. Fascinating. So if we are fearful, your immunity goes down, right? And, and so now you, you really start to manifest your fears right? Because you're yeah. afraid of being sick, that increases the probability that you will be sick, right? So I really work with my clients on trying to keep a positive perspective, a positive frame of mind. And this again, also ties back into a lot of different cultures, whether we talk about meditation, or prayer, and whatever the religion is. So, so like, you know, if I'm communicating with a client or their family, Whatever their religion is or their philosophical beliefs, I will tell them, embrace that. Mm -hmm. Because they're basically all still talking about the same type of thing. It's still helping you with the same mindset, right? And so it creates a positive state of mind. Um, and this is where you also lead into like energy healing. I used to study like spontaneous remission. Okay, I, yeah, I had a yeah. really big, yeah, I had a really big book on spontaneous remission. And behind those results were were like uh, double blind trials where people were being prayed for or people or groups that were meditating for people. And th the results were very clear. They were scientifically undeniable, even though our Western science still tends to deny yes. uh, these things, the effects of meditation, prayer, you know, all, all the different uh, healing modalities of energy medicine, et cetera. Yes. It's very uh, but, tricky because it's, it's undeniable, but it's also unexplainable to, to their perspective. Right. So. Right. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Exactly. So it's, it's too much for people to grasp. Um, I actually even have some videos on, on reality and quantum yeah. physics to try to help people understand the mechanisms, why this the reality is actually not just a simple mechanical world that we live in. And so you, it, it, it helps people a little bit more if I can give them some foundation to understand why this magic kind, yeah. kind of magical healing works. And so I try to demystify it a little bit. Not that you can, because many things are beyond our comprehension. And I also, I don't want to sound like I know everything because I know nothing. 
right? I mean, it, if I had all the knowledge of the human race and the highest IQ on the planet, I would still be just an infant, yes. right? I mean, science didn't end yesterday. Science won't end a hundred years from now, right? So we're still always learning, right? I think so you would I, very I only... much be able to appreciate the the thinking and rational, logical, intellectual understanding and the the feeling knowing. So it's like the feminine, masculine inter, inter dynamic of you've got the science, the logic, the rational and the understanding, but a lot of everybody, I feel everybody's focused there. That's what, that's what science yes. is already doing. We need more of this right. feeling, understanding from a, a knowing, a, a, fe right. a feeling. The intuition. Exactly. The, the intuition. You're right. Exactly. That, that's the only true knowing mm -hmm. is to intuit it. Right. So does so that, does that in, resonate in, a lot with your work? Yeah, absolutely. A hundred percent. Yeah. So I have a great essay, which is not my own, that I took from a book. Uh, I have it on my website that, that tells a, an interesting story about this comparison between the rational mind and the intuitive mind. Mm -hmm. And of course, we have a lot of different vocabulary words and perspective, but it's exactly what you're talking about. The only true knowing is not with the rational mind, so. right? Uh, right. And, and even the intellect, like when we go... So I love science and mathematics. And when we are solving a complex math, mathematical problem, I mean a problem that takes hours to resolve, right? Whether it's math or in physics, mm -hmm. we are using our intuition to help lead us. It's, it's not, right? It's, it's not the rational mind that automatically produces the next step. You have to imagine, where do I go? What do I try, right? So this is the imagination. I, Einstein also said, imagination is more important than knowledge, right? Yeah. So, so again, we're tapping into that intuitive yes. mind. Um, and the same thing for, again, with my clients, when it comes to healing, I always tell the client, again, if I am the, the most intelligent, most knowledgeable, greatest healer on the planet, I still don't know you. Mm -hmm. Right. So I want to lead the individual to use their intuitive process, their intuitive thing. Like they'll say, wow, well, should I eat more of this or should I take more of that? What do you think? Yes. Right. So I can I can guide. But my intellect, right, it, it, w when I'm using the intellect to help heal someone, there's a limit there. I can't yes. really know. Right, I can't really know. It's very relatable. I have very similar experiences myself working with with my clients. It's there's so much you can do logic wise. So there's understanding mm -hmm. the biochemistry and the physiology of the body. There's things you can do that help. Right. But ultimately, you have to help your client learn how to heal themselves because that's where their healing comes from. It's not from you. It's from them. You're trying to cultivate it within them. Right. Exactly. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. So th that's like in in um. I tell people in my protocol, I, I actually, I don't like to say I have a protocol yes, because each individual mean. needs their own protocol. Yes. Out of kind of out of necessity, I had to put together just a core base foundation. Mm -hmm. And I always tell people like my protocol, it, there, there's a hidden agenda that I have there. And then it's, it's, it's about self-empowerment. So the two of the most important things for me when I'm working with someone, I try to get them using kefir and broth or soups. Right. And, and one of the really overwhelming goals that I have, kind of the, this hidden agenda, is to get them in touch with their food because they have to work with these things. They have to like, True. you know, it's like making it at home. So I want to repair their relationship with food, right? And I want to make them understand and appreciate and get them involved in what they're doing. And of course, that's then they're involved with their own healing they're being self-empowered. They're not buying kefir and broth from me. Mm -hmm. I mean, I could sell those things, but that's not what I really want yeah. to do, right? And it's not really best for them. And of course, they could buy it. Like a lot of my clients do buy those things to get started, you know, but I lead them towards making it at home. Yes. Uh, in most cases, in most cases. Especially with things like kefir can be, can be very powerful when you get started out. So making a yes. large batch could be... A, almost feels kind of wasteful because you get to maybe a quarter of a teaspoon every couple of days if that's your your tolerable dose and you've got a lot a lot going to waste so i can understand people people buying it to get started that's that's the way that i started too right right 
Right. Yeah. You, you want to start things slow. Like yeah. there's, that's another interesting thing is the experience of realizing how incredibly powerful these yes. natural foods are because people yes. will get like a crazy detox reaction um, from kefir. Sometimes not everybody, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I've got clients that just jump into a glass a day, <laughs> but um, it, it's, it's funny because you've got, uh, again, you know, wanting to remove fear, uncertainty and doubt from people. And when people jump into something, sometimes they get a really heavy detox reaction and they, they get scared. They panic. Mm -hmm. They, they think, cause you can't differentiate really from a detox reaction or like a flare up of some mm -hmm. condition and, and they get scared. And I'm like, congratulations. That's evidence that you really needed this. Yes. And now you just got to learn to find the amount that fits your body at the moment and you gradually build up. Yes. And, I love to call that the Goldilocks so, zone. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> right. Right. You got to find it. Um, and, and again, right. Each person it's unique. Um, you yes. have to find their own journey into that. So it's, a, it's a, again, it's a self-empowerment thing. You, I can, you might have some useful suggestions of maybe don't go too crazy and have too much, but right. ultimately they have to find their own dose because there's so many variables they have to judge how it makes them feel and what they're able to tolerate. So again, self-empowerment is a, mm -hmm. a good undercurrent right. theme there. Yes, yes, exactly, exactly. It's always the underlying theme, got to get them self-empowered. So I, you know, so I show them these things they can do that they really don't cost any money, that they'll actually save a lot of money. Yeah, it's true. I, yeah, so, right, because like, if, so, something like, if we get back to the basics and I'll tell people like, how did, think about how your grandmother ate. Or if your grandparents alive, ask them ask how them. their grandparents ate. yes. Yeah, you ask them how they eat and, and try to go back and you, you're always going to hear about these like soups and stews and things that were cooked for a long time, you know, long and slow, slow, this slow cooking idea. And I try to get people back to that. And of course, eating natural, natural things. And so I, I, I try to keep people away from products. And of course, we sometimes we do need some products and, and people have, you know, again, kind of brainwashed, we're looking for the magic pill, right? People yes. want easy solutions. And um, not that I want to avoid that, but there really isn't a magic pill. Like if I give you a magic pill, you're just going to come back to me one month later or one year later or five years later, because you're going to be sick again, because you didn't get to the real root mm -hmm. cause, which is kind of lifestyle. Yes. Right. Get, getting time. out the toxic foods. Right. So there's a lot of different contexts that I try to set for the client. And basically, no matter what your issue is, the, the root cause is going to boil down to some type of malnutrition and toxicity, right? And so, you know, controlling your food, mm -hmm. that's a big thing, right? That's a big, important thing. And then many times, because our world is so toxic, even if we have an ideal diet, we still can't get back across the threshold where we can maintain a clean body. And so we need help from things like clay, zeolites, uh, folic acid, like, again, things that the earth provides mm -hmm. to help the body detox better. And I, and I see again, the same thing. I see like miraculous responses from people. Um, and again, it's also empowering because some of these things are really cheap. Like clay is a really yes. cheap, it's literally like mud, um, isn't it? It's like dirt. Yes, yes, exactly. And there's so many ways to use it. Um, and then um, one, of, one of my favorite things to use, and again, because of the, there's a psychological thing here. I use the PBX zeolite. And so zeolite, I studied for many years, but mm -hmm. I was trying to keep people away from it because most of the products were, they're really kind of scams. Um, not that zeolite is not fantastic, but again, most of the products for scamming people, I, I could say the same thing, similar with CBD oil, where it can be amazing for people. But again, most of the market is a scam. In, in the case of CBD oil, it's because it's very expensive and the amount that is helpful is, is you, you can't afford to buy enough, mm -hmm. right? So there's, there's no cost benefit. With zeolite, they just... Like the other companies, uh, there's one company I use. Um, I, don't know, I can even show you. This is this is the only zeolite that I use from that from that company. 
And it's because they have a process where it's it's unique. They just don't have an equal. Mm-hmm. And Which one of was the that, sorry? things that um, you say it's it? uh, pure body extra was that? Yeah, it's, it's from yeah, pure body, it's PBX. Actually, if you okay. go to my Vitagenics site, okay. so you can go to Vitagenics dot uh, touchstone. You know, now I'm, I just forgot. If the I'll leave a head. URL below. Look, you'll leave. Yeah, you will leave like you, yeah, yeah. So yeah, so I'll leave you all that information. Cool. Yeah, so you you can find links to that. By the way, if I I give coupon codes, mm-hmm. so I have like fifty dollar gift certificates and and things like that for these things to get people started. But the I, I just I wanted to mention this for again the psychological factor. Um, so something like this, it has no taste. And people just spray it in their mouth like three times a day, like four sprays. So it 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 has that, you know, we're talking about again, like people want to have like a magic bullet and something that's very easy, right? Like they don't want to be responsible for doing something. Yes. So this this product is one of those things where it's so simple, you can take it with you. It's, it's very easy for them to do. And this is for it's for detoxing. So right? who do you find and this is most beneficial for? Um, again, if I would say most beneficial, I, mm-hmm. all my clients, I recommend it to, because the root cause of everything, toxicity is going mm-hmm. to be a factor, right? And if, if I, if I couldn't say most beneficial, but for example, if you've got, uh, like autistic children or people that are having vaccine injuries, which mm-hmm. is heavily on the rise right now, it's, it's a really big thing. So this, this special zeolite has, it's, it's the smallest zeolite product there is. And so it can get everywhere in the body and it can pull out heavy metals like aluminum, mercury and such. And so you'll see clients talk about how their child spoke for the first time mm. or made eye contact for the first time. So things like this, th- this is not placebo effect. These are very young children, right? And so, and we're we are aware of this. So I I'm a big fan also of the GAPS protocol protocol. Yes, myself too. Gotten psychology syndrome. And but this this is a very strict diet. And it's just, the idea here is right, you make your diet so clean, eventually the body can catch up with detoxing and it will pull those toxins mm-hmm. out of the brain, even and then you you have children recovering from all kinds of autistic issues or recovering from autism, right? Or improving from mm-hmm. autism. But this is a really tough challenge, right? It's very, very difficult. I still love the GAPS diet. I'd still recommend it. But I also work with a lot of different subsets of that. And I work with additional tools like using the zeolite, mm-hmm. using clay. So g- clays are going to stay in the gut, right? Yes, yeah, that, so yeah, they're good. Yeah, so my with my clients, I use the clay and the zeolites together, along with other natural detoxers or like we'll say like chelation mm-hmm. uh, agents. But I try to keep people away from too much chelation. Um, just real quick for people that don't know, chelation is when so we have something like uh, you know really like cilantro, spirulina. We, we have a lot of natural plant compounds that. Um, are very good at grabbing toxins. But when they grab the toxin, they form a new toxic substance. And so the body still has to deal with that and process that. So that's the process of chelation is grabbing something, but you're forming another compound. The, and, and so this can be a real issue, right? So you got to be very careful with chelation therapies. Um, in a trauma situation, you know, you sometimes you need to do something if you've been poisoned, you need to chelate that yes, out of the correct. body. But for for really long-term recover from like autoimmune issues and things like that, where we really need to get out a lot of toxins that are deeply embedded, you use something like zeolite because it's like um it's like a magnetic box. It's in it's inert, it just travels through the body, it rides the water. It doesn't form any new compounds and it just grabs, it, it, it has a very powerful negative charge. And so it grabs the heavy metals, which have a very mm-hmm. strong positive charge. It just sucks them in and then it carries them out. So this is functioning and, through absorption over absorption. 
There, it actually does use both, but okay. really it's about uh, absorption and it's, okay. it's, um, it's using, so like clay, right? So, so clay charcoal, I like, I like using active activated charcoal also. Okay. Um, but so they'll use like the cationic exchange. So the, the zeolite is actually loaded with like good minerals, like magnesium, mm. potassium, calcium, et cetera. But something like lead has a much stronger positive charge. So when the zeolite sees that, it will swap. Mm -hmm. It will give your body the magnesium, which it needs, and it will grab the lead. Clay works the same way, also doing both adsorption and absorption. Um, but the, the zeolite, again, because of its super, at least with this product, not all zeolites, but with this product, it's super small size. It can get everywhere. Right. And then it will grab it and mo mostly through the absorption where it actually pulls in, okay. it takes it in. So you're saying that these, that this kind of approach complements the, the lifestyle factor changes, like implementing a nutritiously dense diet that's free of toxins, complements it very well and can help expedite the results of something like a GAPS diet that can right. take some time. Right. right, exactly. So right, I'm trying to take a holistic perspective mm -hmm. and, you know, and, and of course, some, some people are also, they feel that sense of urgency. Mm -hmm. They want, they want something else. And one of the things I tell people, I was like, look, we don't want to bring financial stress on you. So you got to think about that too. So please do try to focus on these, these less sexy things. Yes. Like yes. kefir and broth. Um, for example, two, there's, there's only two things in my base protocol that I consider actually supplements like, like this, I don't consider a supplement because it's not nourishing the body. Okay. Right. It's a detox, it's a detox aid. So the definition so of a supplement to you is something that supplements a, a nutrient. Right. Exactly. Okay. That's what it's right. A supplement mm -hmm. is right. Something that you need, you're not getting enough of. So you're supplementing, right? The, the body doesn't, we, we don't use clay and mm -hmm. zeolite as nutrients, right? Yeah. But when we're sick, I mean, even animals will seek out clay. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, true. Right? We'll, 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 they'll, they'll all seek it out. Um, but again, we don't, we don't supplement. It's not supplementing something. Um, there, I guess, you know, we, there is a, um, accidentally it supplements a little bit because as I mentioned, the way it works, it gives us a little magnesium, yeah. but it's, but that's, that's not significant. Almost accidental. So when I yeah. took, yeah, it's almost accidental. It's just part of the process. When I talk about supplements, I'll, always tell people you're going to want to have magnesium oil you're going to want almost everybody's deficient on magnesium yes i, I could agree i would agree on that one yeah right and uh, and it's because and we know it's because the soil has been depleted so the plants are depleted the animals and and we're animals right so yes and and i really focus a lot i try to drive people towards the magnesium oil topical magnesium and there's a, a couple of reasons one the absorption is amazing. The amount of magnesium you can get into the body is, is far, far outweighs any amount you can get internally because you're going to have limits internally. And you, many people get digestive stress yes. when they do magnesium internally. I want to avoid that because a lot of my clients have gut issues. And so you so they, like a, another common thing we say is that the root of a lot of health issues is in the gut. Yes. Right. And so if we fix the gut, we fix everything. Right. Yeah. So it, this is very, very important. So I'm always talking about gut healing. Right. And again, taking magnesium often creates an, an issue if you're taking it internally. So I try to get people going topically. So what would be the benefits of using a magnesium oil over something, say, like Epsom salts in, a, in the bath? OK, so I love Epsom salt, okay. too, and I love baths. Another great well, I guess we can say topical solution, yes. but the Epsom salt works better for detoxing. You don't okay. absorb as much magnesium. So if you, I've got plenty of clients that do both things. So I'll tell okay. you if you like to take baths. Um, also when you're, so Epsom salt, magnesium sulfate, magnesium oil is made with magnesium chloride. Okay. So it absorbs it better. The Epsom salt is cheaper. So that's, that's one benefit. And like, there's, there are people that love to do like foot baths every day, or they like to take a bath every day. Definitely do the Epsom salt, put some baking soda, put a spoonful of borax in there. You'll get some boron. 
Um, but still, I would still be recommending the magnesium okay. oil. It's just you just yeah. don't think it's enough. You think it really it's really unnecessary. Right. In most cases, again, mm -hmm. right? Everybody's unique, but True. most people. But I would right, also most, agree that almost everybody has a fairly chronic magnesium deficiency. It's very, right. very common. Right, exactly. And then there's another thing. When when you start to get healthy, you start to detox more. And this is the goal. We want to really detox and clean out the body. Magnesium gets burned up really fast. Very fast. Yes. So so it becomes a limiting factor for how fast you can detox or how pleasant or unpleasant your detox will be. Yes. Right. So that's another reason why I do it. Um, uh, because it's it, it's not just because it's part of like hundreds of different you know, enzymes and hormones yeah. and processes and things, but because of that, the detox process, it's critical for. So you're saying the other that thing, many of these yeah. symptoms of what makes detox unpleasant isn't actually necessarily the detox process itself, but is in essence a functional magnesium deficiency. Uh, yes, in some cases, right, that will be it. Not always, but in some mm -hmm. cases, the magnesium is going to ease that process. In other cases, it's going to make it even feel a little bit worse because the body is able to detox uh, more strongly more rapidly, because it yeah. has more magnesium, right? So it's a very complex issue. Like your, your body will make you feel like you're dying if it has the ability, if all its detox pathways are functioning well and you are poisoned, it will detox to a point mm. where you feel like you're yeah. in your death throes. Yes. This is not a bad thing. You're going to right. your body's not going to kill you this way, but it can be unbearable. Yes, I, I agree. It's right. very much like the sicker you can feel, the healthier you can feel like they're both polar extremes. And if you can't have an extreme of yes. one, you also can't have an extreme of the other. Yes, yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, uh, an interesting uh, thing. I don't know if you know about the, there's a famous frog poison combo. Oh, yes, yes. Uh, a psychedelic. Yeah, yeah, uh, it's yeah. not. It's actually, it's actually not a psychedelic, but many people uh, view it that way because okay. it's a, it's, it's a, an extreme poison. And I, I actually went through it. I have a, a blog post on it. Um, so it causes people to go through extreme detox, and it will often cure things like herpes, Epstein Barr virus, etc. You do this for like three days, but you feel like you're dying. Yeah. And so it's done in a ceremony. You need support people. Everybody's vomiting, diarrhea, rolling on the floor, you know, moaning. I went through this three years ago and I just sat through it. I didn't vomit. I didn't have diarrhea because my body was already so clean. So it was like, and, and I'm watching the people around me, like just rolling on the floor, dying. Um, of course, nobody died. Everybody was okay. Yeah. It's the process. Um, Right, exactly. So just, again, just to emphasize, you know, what, what you were talking about, how the body being able to go into a very extreme state when it is able and when it needs to detox. Mm -hmm. So what we've done in the modern world is we've, we've kind of disabled or hindered, yes, you know, it's true. our, de yeah, right. So, so we need to re-enable that. And so magnesium is really important for enabling that. Um, like when I, when we were talking about like clay and zeolite, that's aiding the body's detox capabilities. Like the zeolite is amazing because it's, it's just detoxing without burdening the body at all. Mm -hmm. It's very clay, passive clay process. Is more, yes. Yes. Right. Right. I, it can trigger crazy things, but still it's a, right. It's a passive process. So, but the magnesium is really helping your systems to turn on. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, I wanted to mention one other thing. Another reason why I like the magnesium oil is to also get people into understanding and introduce them into topical absorption mm -hmm. to, again, put them more in touch with their skin and realize that you can be doing things like there, there's so many things you can absorb through the skin, right? So we magnesium, by the way, magnesium oil is actually not an oil. The magnesium oh. citrate is a salt. Yeah, it's really, it feels really oily but it's actually just like a, a super dense, like salt water. Oh, except okay. it's, wow. Yeah. Except it's, it's mostly magnesium and chloride. Yeah. So Fascinating. Um, yeah, yeah. It's really, it's very interesting. We, we call it magnesium oil because it feels like an oil, um, but it's not an oil. And so anyway, but I want to introduce people to this idea of being able to absorb topically 
also targeting topically. So for example, uh, most people know magnesium is great to get the muscles to relax, right? Like if we have muscle cramps, you target the muscles directly. You put it on your chest and your back, you get the lungs to relax. Magnesium, again, the magnesium is amazing even for asthma. And you, you can even nebulize magnesium chloride to get it into the mm -hmm. lungs. You, you don't do that a lot. You know, you want, you want to make sure you understand what you're doing. Yes. When you're nebulizing that. Um, Cause you, and by the way, you also don't want to drink magnesium chloride. If you, it's a little bit fun though. If you put a little magnesium chloride in your mouth, if it's, if it's highly concentrated, like a magnesium oil typically is, it'll feel like an electric shock almost. Wow. Yeah. It's very, very, because your body will absorb it so quickly. Wow. In fact, You'll also notice on your skin, some people will feel a burning sensation. Mm. Um, and you don't want to do it on your face for that reason, because again, your face is more sensitive. And it's the, very thin, isn't it? To, the tissues in the face are very yeah, thin. Yes, yes. And the, and, and the tissues, like every part of the body and the skin is quite different and even has different biomes, like different yes, bacteria true, true. or yeast, right? So we, we don't realize it. It just all looks like skin to us, but there are a lot of differences as you said, either with, with the thickness, with the mm. biome, with the constitution, et cetera. It's also helps so, as well, because if people begin to realize that they can absorb nutrients through their skin, it also helps to make them realize, oh, all of these things that I'm putting on my skin that might contain toxic compounds, I actually absorb these things too. Exactly. hundred percent. That gets you right into the whole cosmetics. Yeah. Like yeah. when I explain, yep. When I talk about people and I talk about the PBX and they say, well, why, why should I use it? And then we have, you know, like endless information on all the different toxins that are in like cosmetics or what we think are healthy hand creams, mm -hmm. hand sanitizers. Yeah. There's just so many, there's so many crazy things out there. Yeah. Um, and a, just the air and water. I have a really good rule of thumb because it's kind of like what you were saying earlier. Your clients might come to you and say, is it okay for me to put this on my skin? Is this healthy for me? Is this not? My rule of thumb is, put it in your mouth and taste it and you will know. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Yeah. Like Cause you can that. tell, you can tell if something yeah. is a food based skin product, it will taste palatable. It will taste. Yeah. Okay. If it's full of chemicals. Right. You will know your body will tell you with the taste. Right. right. Yeah. I like that. I haven't used that. I have to remember that. That's a good yeah, one. Yeah, that's Cause good. you think you wouldn't yeah. spray deodorant in your mouth. Don't put that on your right. skin. Right. <laughs> right. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Right. We want to stay natural. I yeah. mean, really the, it's amazing. Nature gives us everything we need. And so again, even when I'm, when I'm talking about the zeolite or clay, these other things that, again, not really nourishing or they're not supplements, but they're aids in detox, they're coming from nature, mm -hmm. right? So now again, so this, the Pure Body Extra, we say the, the PBX, it's the only, it's the only company that I use zeolite from because there are a lot of bad products. So, so zeolite is so powerful that there are more than 200 synthetic forms, mm -hmm. right? So that we're, we're trying to recreate it, customize it a little bit. You don't want any of that in the human body. So you're saying this is a natural absolute, form? Right. Yes. Right. So this is what we call it's a clinoptilolite. And then, and there's lots of clinoptilolite zeolite products out there, but they also have to be cleaned, right? So they have to be properly cleaned. So this is where like the competition comes in, mm -hmm. so to say, with the products. They need to be cleaned. They need to be seeded properly with the healthy minerals because remember, we're taking them from nature, right? So they're out there in nature. Our world is now quite toxic. It's very polluted, right? yeah. So, yeah, and so these things, if, if we're getting a zeolite that's dirty, right what that's not helping mm -hmm. us it's not going to do anything harm it's, it's right functional right right exactly exactly and then um the the other thing is that uh, the pbx is smaller than any other zeolite mm -hmm. in the world um which is a which is again which helps give it its power and if you know even when we talk about clays you'll notice like the you want a really smooth fine mm -hmm. clay clay is easy because you can get like a redmond's clay like anywhere in the world. It's a very good, well-known, well-established product. But even a lot of my clients, I'll say, listen, check locally, whatever country you're in, mm -hmm. you probably have a really good clay near mm -hmm. you. 
You know, if you're down in Costa Rica, go down to the river, you know, and dig up some clay. You can use, because clay, you can also use again topically. Yes, it's like the right? mud clay, baths, isn't clay it? mat. Yes, yes. So, yeah, all really good things. In fact, a lot of like the clay baths and natural baths in the world, a lot of them are miraculous, partially because of magnesium that's mm -hmm. getting into the yeah. body. So that's again one of the things. Um, very cool. Yeah. So anyway, right. So I'm, I'm trying to keep it all tied together. Let, let me jump to the second, the one other supplement yes. that I would recommend that yeah, I always do. recommend. This is MSM. Methyl methane, I believe. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Right. Very good. Wow. Yeah. Thank I you. usually <laughs> don't even, I don't even want to tempt my clients <laughs> to try to get, because I don't, I don't want them to try to like memorize things. Yes. Um, but I have a really good video on MSM out there. Um, and what a lot of people don't realize is that, <clears throat> so uh, humans, we've always, before modern times, we were exposed to a lot of MSM all the time because it comes down in the rain, mm -hmm. right? So we were getting rained on the plants, we're getting rained on the animals. So we, can, we had so much MSM, MSM we consume so much of it, and now we have almost none. And MSM is also incredible for detox at the cellular level. So it helps cells. It, it actually lowers the energy requirements for things to pass in and out of the cell membrane. Mm -hmm. So cells can detox and they can absorb. So MSM is often referred to as a carrier because people envision it as carrying other nutrients and things into a cell hmm. so it technically doesn't carry but it's it just allows this it's penetration yes exactly it's amazing and it also really aids methylation mm -hmm. yes you can and imagine provides, with the name you've got methyl at the yes, beginning yes yeah, you're right right in, exactly in the so you've got yes, the, the methane yes. the methyl donors you've got the sulfur component yes. there's a chronic exactly. sulfur deficiency as well so it's ties yes, into all of these exactly. different things yeah really cool exactly exactly so that's the that's the other thing right the sulfur deficiency so mm. you see that and again right for healing the skin for healing the gut lining you're gonna need sulfur yeah msm is like it's so cheap it's cheap you can take you can really take a lot of it like for example if you go it's very it's very popular on the market as a component of joint supplements. Mm -hmm. Yes. Joint supplements tend to be more expensive, like selling uh, glucosamine and uh, chondroitin, chondroitin, right? And there's usually the third kind of in small print is usually MSM. Yeah. But the, the key is now, those other two components are really good, but the MSM is actually a better thing to get. It's cheaper and you can take like tablespoons a day if you had a desire to actually move up to such a high level or a need to move up to such a high level. And I do have some clients that have done that for periods of time. So what would a, a need for this look like? What was this sort of manifest as a physical expression of symptoms? Right. So anyone that has a gut issue, anybody that needs to heal probably needs more sulfur, mm -hmm. right? So it does play a fundamental body. role in glutathione production it's the sixth most abundant mineral in the human body wow. you use it for a lot of different things very I'm important i'm so glad you mentioned that because if if you watch my my old msm video you'll see that i i explain that sulfur is the limiting factor for how much glutathione yes. you can produce very often right is. And taking glutathione is not really great because you don't absorb it well. No, it's, it's terrible. I agree. I've, I've been talking yeah. about this recently as well myself. Fantastic. Yeah, fantastic. Yes. Yeah, so you're spot on. I mean, you're 100% yeah. correct. So the key, the real, the real key to glutathione production is sulfur. And the best way to get bioavailable sulfur into the body is MSM. And, and again, and MSM is doing so much more in addition to that. So... Really, whatever your ailment is, whatever your problem is, MSM is going to help you. If you're a person, so we've got people that they incorrectly say that they are um, sensitive to the sulfur or mm -hmm. they're sulfur intolerant. Sulfur intolerant, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so I explained to them, I was like, well, actually, it's just some sulfur compounds. 
you can't be intolerant to sulfur or you'll die. Exactly. You gotta have sulfur, right? Yeah. So, so MSM is usually also a workaround for those people because they can't, there's many sulfur compounds. Maybe they, they can't tolerate like cruciferous vegetables, Mm -hmm. right? But they can take MSM. Right. And so why is that? That's great. Uh, because it's not it's not the sulfur compound that those people are having mm-hmm. an issue with. So the people that have sulfur intolerance, it's very specific sulfur compounds, larger sulfur molecules. So the 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 MSM is just it's two methyl groups bound to a sulfur atom, right? And, and um, there's a couple oxygen atoms. I forgot this the exact structure. It's a very very <laughs> small molecule and very simple. Right. And so it's very easy for our body to just rip that apart and use it as it needs. Mm-hmm. Okay. So you don't have, right. So you don't have any of these other sulfur compounds that would irritate these sensitive people. Okay. Right. Very interesting. Yeah. Another, um, I'll give you another really quick win for people. About 80% of people will get rid of hay fever and many other allergies just by taking MSM. Okay. Can you and, walk us through that? And this is, um, and this is because of you know, histamine. Mm-hmm. So a lot of people, or, or for example, people that they're diagnosed as being, of having high histamine or histamine intolerance. What happens with the MSM, very simply, it's enabling the cells at the cellular level to detox the histamine much easier. Mm-hmm. And so now the body is able to process the histamine. So could that in some situations cause acute flare-ups because the symptoms aren't usually necessarily present when it's being held in the cell. It's when it's coming into the circul- into circulation. So could this acutely stimulate a histamine-like reaction? I haven't seen it do that because usually people that have the reactions, right, they're getting like skin issues, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. So there will be, so we, we like histamine is really complicated because it's it very is com- right? It could be uh, mast cell issues. It can be a compromised liver, right? We're, like you said, we're not getting the histamine out of the blood mm-hmm. fast enough. So the blood is overloaded, but it'll show up like where people get the real issues, right? Th- their eyes are watery. Mm-hmm. They get the skin rashes, irritated skin. They, th- th- at those, c- the cells need to get the histamine mm-hmm. out. Okay, they so that's on a cellular even- level. Yes, yes. So the okay. histamine is helping at a cellular level. Um, by the way, zeolite will even grab histamine out of the blood. Oh, wow. If it's not loaded up already with other toxins. Mm-hmm. So that's another, but you know, the zeolite conversation is a really interesting thing to see how it works in the body. Cause it like cycles through different toxins, whatever, mm-hmm. whatever it loves. The well, most. Okay. So it, it prioritizes whatever sort of like, like head, like heaviest. Right. That whatever has the strongest positive mm-hmm. charge. Mm-hmm. So for example, it, you maybe let's say, let's say you've got a liver issue. And so your blood has too much histamine and you've got histamine issues for that reason. Your, your body can't get the histamine out of the blood fast enough. And you start taking zeolite, but the zeolite is loaded up, pulling lead out of your body, mm-hmm. mercury, aluminum. Eventually, let's say months later, you start noticing your histamine issues are getting better because now the, the zeolite mm-hmm. is starting to grab mm-hmm. some of the histamine. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's really cool. And not to mention, if you've removed a lot of this toxicity, this is what causes the mast cells to activate in many cases. They don't just activate for no reason. They have a stimulus. So if you've removed that stimulus, the histamine doesn't need to be released. So very interesting. Yes, absolutely. Yes. So, right. It's, it's everything. It's so complicated what's going on. So I often tell people, don't try to understand why this happened. I can give you 100 reasons, mm-hmm. but we can't really prove which one it is, or it can be a combination of any of them. Yeah. And so this is what I try to boil it down to. I was like, it's very simple. It's, it's very, very simple. Don't get lost in the details. Mm-hmm. You just got to get the nourishment your body needs and you got to detox to a point where your body can mm-hmm. manage detox on its own. Right. And it's, it's, I think it's really cool yeah. that you said that. And I'd, I'd love to transition to talking about, so we've kept this, almost all in the realms of the physical. So you've got this, mm. this, this two sort of, this two pronged nutritional deficiency and exogenous toxicity. But could we look at this maybe from more of a, like an energetic or an emotional perspective as well? Because you have to look at this on all 100%. layers, right? Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. In my, um, in a couple of my videos, I use a, a, a stolen image of, from, a, it has a shaman mm-hmm. talking about 
defining a toxin. So, and then this is the way I define a toxin. It's too much of anything, too much fear, too mm -hmm. much greed, right? Yeah. Too much mercury, aluminum, right? As you were saying, but yeah. So my definition includes these intangibles, mm. right? That we can't quantify. We can't put our hands on it. We can't put it in a bottle, toxic emotions. So this is what led me to get certified in the emotion code. Mm -hmm. Because I can actually, so the emotion code is really, it's really cool. It's a, a modern method um, uh, created, or we could even say discovered mm -hmm. uh, by Dr. Bradley Nelson. Um, but it taps into, again, the thousands of years of healing practices, talks about the meridian, the chakras, mm -hmm. et cetera. But it's a very kind of a simplified process where we can go in, we use muscle testing. I love muscle so again, testing, kinesiology, all I, very interesting things. Yes, yes. And again, the, these things are an untapped power. So I used to just admire the people and the, the professionals and the experts that do that. But we can all do muscle mm -hmm. testing. We all can do it. And so I try to lead my clients towards that. Of course, not all of them are going to do it. Yes. You know, you, you got to have a passion and a desire. But the bottom line is we all have this innate ability to do it. And you're, you're kind of, again, you're tapping into the knowing. These energies and things. Yeah, yeah, mm. exactly. And so when, when we talk about, in this case, emotions, we talk about trapped emotions. They are trapped energies. Mm -hmm. So they are, and like, so something happened at some point in our life and maybe there was an emotion we couldn't handle and the body kind of trapped that emotion somewhere. And over time, that can be, sometimes it's the straw that broke the camel's back. Yeah, very right? often. Combined, the right? Combined with malnutrition and physical toxins and emotional toxin can really create dysfunction in the body. So the emotion code is a method where I can do a session and I can just, I can actually go and just pull the trapped emotions. I can release them from the person's body. And, and we see like, again, like miraculous results. So we, we still want to do everything, right? We always want to be mm -hmm. holistic. It's always holistic. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, we want to be holistic, but that energy, it, you know, the energy side of things or the spiritual side of things, that's all part of it. Mm -hmm. right it's, it's all connected and so sometimes the missing piece for healing is that trapped emotion mm -hmm. or is that meditation practice you know or, or prayer or something else that enables us to stay calm sometimes often it requires a changing of beliefs right so that we you know we, re we reduce the amount of emotions that we trap mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right yeah. so yeah. if we're right if we're if we're living in a state of fear we want to change that belief system, right? So we work on those things, those things too, because again, that's, that's energy, right? I mean, we, when you're with a person, you can feel that mm -hmm. energy, yes, whether it's joy can. or fear, right? So we, we, we know it, right? It's like, it's emotions are contagious and uh, quite literally yes. they, they are, right? They quite literally, they are. Um, and I, yeah, and I really got to give a shout out um, to Dr. Nelson, um, his work with the body code is, uh, is amazing. And you, you could actually go buy the book, the body code. Um, and, and that's how I started. Um, my brother actually ended up pointing it to me. And at first I was like, yeah, I was like, look, you know, there's, there's like a thousand methods like that. <laughs> yeah. I was like, I'll take a look. And I told my brother, I was like, look, if that appeals to you, you know, I like, there's so many things and I, and I love them all because we, you know, there's all these different techniques that humans have been developing in different cultures for thousands of years. But I looked at it and I started to read this book and I was like, wow. I was like, I really love what this guy's doing. And, and again, and he's, um, he gives credit to everything that came before him. So he's, he's tapping into all the same stuff, just a very, um, a really good, clean method. And the way, the, the really good thing about like his book is, He's letting you know we can all do muscle testing. And the muscle testing is a tool, not just for doing the emotion code, but I, as you know, yeah. for doing like just about anything. Everything. Right? Yeah. Your yeah. body knows. Your body has the answer to yes. every question you could ask it. 
Yes, right, exactly, exactly. And so we just, you know, it's about developing our school, our school, our skill at asking the questions, right? So that so sounds like a, a really good tip, a really good technique for what we would consider like emotional toxicity. But what about deficiency? Emotional deficiency. Yeah. Well, that's changing. Yeah. Changing our lifestyles. Right. And, you know, like we say, you know, in order to, for example, in order to love someone, right. And then get their love in return. First, you got to love yourself. Mm -hmm. That's true. Right. So the emotional deficiencies are still, and again, and this is going to start kind of right. Dealing with the belief system. We got to love ourselves, respect ourselves. And we start working on the belief system. Like, gratitude right the practice of gratitude writing a gratitude journal is so powerful right so this is another thing that i try to get people to do so you think I these techniques gratitude. will help to cultivate and resolve this deficiency of of, of the positive emotion yes 100 percent. like so i'll tell people like like no, no matter who we are no matter how bad our situation is there are at least several billion people that are in a worse situation. It's always true. Right? right. And if you look at those billions that are in a worse situation, a lot of them are still smiling every day. Right. So like the whole idea is like happiness is a choice. Right. So this is another, like another, again, a belief. And you, when you choose to be happy, you can kind of relate this, um, an expression that, I sometimes like and don't like is like fake it till you make it mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. you fake it and, and this also kind of lines up with another similar idea uh, a lie that continues to be told that is not challenged eventually becomes the truth right mm -hmm. so you you again these are like techniques these are methods these are things to help you you know so to make up for that emotional deficiency right so mm -hmm. i am happy i am keep telling yourself you're happy and the way you really become happy is like you, you focus on gratitude. You, you start to realize like, oh my God, really? It's true. I really am. I really should be grateful. Like, wow, what an amazing life I have. This is incredible. I find it can be a bit of a difficult thing to get started with, but it's sort of like a snowball. And as you're able to do that, more things become good, more thing, more positive stuff happens and you have more to be grateful for. And then it almost becomes effortless. Like it's hard to push the snowball down the, down the cliff when it starts to get rolling. But once it starts building mm -hmm. momentum, it picks up more snow, it gets bigger more quickly. You don't have to do anything. It's just yeah. almost a passive process. Yep. hundred percent. Yeah, absolutely. Right. And then cool. it's, um, you it just reminded me too, like that ties into even the idea of synchronicity mm -hmm. because you just start, right. You just, yeah. things just start happening get in right. tune with with what's supposed to be happening and good stuff just happens effortlessly yes yes exactly, exactly. okay well this has been a uh, very interesting i'm sure we're going to have you on again because this has been oh. we've related to so much stuff i found a lot of what you said very interesting i have a, a few questions that i'd like to ask you before you go but is there anything you'd like to say before before i ask those questions i'd say that um yeah listen um dig deep into what we've been talking about mm -hmm. because these things are the reality, right? It doesn't have to be so difficult to heal. Um, sometimes it takes long, but as long as you're moving in the right direction, right? So like you're that snowball, mm -hmm. you, you feel like, you know, when am I going to get there? Don't think about the final destination. You're moving forward. You just keep doing the right things and you will get there. So just enjoy the journey and you just keep on adding all these different tools and joys into your life. Yeah. Life is about the journey, right? I, and it does get a little bit easier when things start to be positive and you actually, it, it almost becomes easy to enjoy the day. And then it gets to the point where you actually are enjoying the day and you're not even trying. You just actually have a really cool life. And you might not be 100%. That's still where I am. I'm still not 100%, but I can enjoy every day now. There's always a, a silver lining, even if there's a big storm cloud. So you just keep going in that direction and it does get easier. Yes, yes. Awesome. So I want to ask you, for everybody listening, there's so much to spend your money on, but there's, as you said, there's so many basics that you can do that are very cheap, very inexpensive, or even free. What's something that you would suggest that people should try or might, might be interested in researching that is very cost-effective or, or free and is almost universally beneficial to basically everyone? Uh, so 
kefir um, is my number one mm -hmm. recommendation. And it's a very close, in fact, if you look at my protocol video, I list uh, broth or soups mm -hmm. and stuff actually above kefir. Mm -hmm. um, so like really learning how to do one of those things. But I'll, I'll still always recommend kefir first because it tends to be more alien to people. Mm -hmm. Like if I, if I say soup, people are like, well, I already eat soup at home. Mm -hmm. Um, but they're not really doing it the right way, probably. But so kefir is something new that they bring into their world. It introduces them to so much. The, the, the nutrition and the probiotics mm -hmm. are just like off the charts, right? There's, you just can't, you can't compete with it as a, as a probiotic. There are no probiotic really pills. And, yeah, you can't. It's just, it's incredible. And um, the amino acids, like, like bodybuilders, they tell me, oh, I want to, I want to use this whey protein. I was like, why are you going to use whey protein? Use the whey itself yeah. <laughs> in kefir. Kefir is providing you the whey, tons of amino acids, peptides, minerals, vitamins. And again, the probiotics, it's just, so I'd say kefir, mm -hmm. which is basically free because you're, you know, you just need milk. You, uh, and let me, let me clarify that the, the free point is you get the kefir grains, you don't buy the powder that you have to keep mm -hmm. buying because that's not really the same thing. So you, you get, we, I, it's grain. It's not a wheat. Um, it's yes. like a scoby. Or scoby like, yeah. Yeah. It's a symbiotic colony of bacteria. And you, so you get these kefir grains and then they just, you keep reusing them. You just keep putting them in the milk. So, so kefir, that's the free thing. So for, for anyone wanting to try that, where, and say they don't have a scoby, where can they get one? Where can they get a scoby or a kefir grain? So usually you can go to, on Amazon, you'll find some different sellers mm -hmm. and they'll send it to you. Um, there's Cultures of Life, which is a uh, company. They sell both uh, milk kefir. They, they sell like different kinds of yogurts and stuff. Mm -hmm. But I think you also you'll find their brand online, you know, but there's, there's a lot of suppliers. You might find it locally, depending on where you are in the world. You know, you might find neighbor. That's traditionally how kefir is passed on. Someone else has it and mm -hmm. you get the grains from them. Um, but you, you can find it um, not, not in your local supermarket. That's not likely. But if mm -hmm. you go to your like on, and I don't want to promote using Amazon. I, want, I always want to promote using local, you know, buy yes. local, stay local. So check local first. But if you can't find it, yeah, just search for kefir grains. Uh, on Amazon and you'll find different providers. Um, and this is also something you can not... find in like fermenting groups. If you've got like um, yes, local, yes. like county or state fermenting groups, you can find people that would send you them. You can buy them. Sometimes they give you them for free. And there's fermenting groups, there's Facebook groups, gut health groups. If you post in there, there's probably some people that have these things and they'd be happy to send them to you. So you can find these yes. things. They're there. They're available. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, sometimes my clients share They'll know some, they'll be yeah. living in the same area and yeah. Okay. Yeah, and very, very good. So this is, this is, this is more for, for individuals, but now I want to, I'm asking you if, say you were in an, in an elevator with, you got 30 seconds to have an elevator pitch to people that are in authority, people that are in power. They've like the ministry of, of health and, and things like that. They've mm -hmm. got strong influence over the direction of health in, in the world. What would you, what would you tell them? How would you try to influence them on like state or like even global direction of health? What, what would you say? 30 second pitch. Wow. Well, I, I would have to assume <laughs> that they were going to listen. I mean, those yes, people yeah. in power. Yeah. They're completely they, receptive. Oh, they're completely receptive. Yeah. Wow. So then they definitely have to change the laws to stop like banning raw milk. Okay. So, you know, so r r raw milk is super. So, it's like, look, do you, do you realize that businesses have been controlling the law to block raw milk, even to block clay? You know, so like clay, the labels on clay have to be changed. So it can't say for internal mm -hmm. use anymore. Mm -hmm. So all natural healing is actively being blocked by, by laws or by legislation that is pushed through by, by business. And I would tell that person in power, please think about what your grandmother ate. And okay. if she, if you're, if you're go back generations and think about how strong and healthy they were and how they didn't get sick, how they didn't know anybody with autism, right. Or epilepsy, et cetera. Right. Or vaccine in injury and whatnot. Ask them. 
think about the generations and think about how all other creatures on earth are eating. We, we are animals, right? We're a mammal. Look at all the other mammals. They're not running to a supermarket, right? They're just, they're eating real food, mm -hmm. right? That's clean. So yeah, I would, I would try to get them to think about that and, and reverse or remove the legislation that's blocking us from getting good, healthy food. Right. I think that's a really good message. It's really, it's really bare bones. It's really basic. And that's really where you have to start. You have to start the fundamental problems that are, that are occurring. So right, I right, agree. Right. Well, it's been really lovely to have you, Victor. Thank you very much. Um, thank gonna, you. Thank you. It's been get, a pleasure. I'm going to get all of the links that you've mentioned and I'm going to leave them below. So if anybody wants any of the links that Victor's mentioned today, Victor's going to send me them all. So you can just, there'll be a huge catalog and you can just click whatever it is that you want. So awesome. get Victor to send that over to me. I'll leave that below. And if you have any questions for Victor, he's going to, he's, he's in the Facebook group. So he's going to be present. He's going to be able to answer any questions you have. If anybody wants to reach out to you, Victor, get any more information about any products that you mentioned, or if they want help with you, what's the best way that they can do that? Um, well, like you said, they can tag me in your group mm -hmm. or they can go to uh, search Vitagenics, mm -hmm. like in Facebook or on Google. You'll find my site, vitagenics.me. .me. And, then, and then you'll see more information there. Or you can, you can email me at victor.cosetto at gmail.com or at vitagenics.com. Right. And I'll leave so all I'm, of this I'm, below as well. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm pretty easy to find, you know, okay. you, you can find me through my name or through Vitagenics. Brilliant. Cool. Okay. Right. Great. So, yeah. Thank thanks. you. I'm so glad it was, it's nice to see oh, eye to eye with people. Yeah. I'm glad that you've, uh, that you've enjoyed it. You've been a wonderful guest and I hope to have you again soon. Thank you, Victor. Oh, thank you. Thank you. My pleasure. You've been listening to the Holistic Healing Collective with William Dickinson. Our passion is to heal with energy, holistic, and plant medicine using a science-based blend of mind, body, and spirit. We hope you've enjoyed the show, and we hope you've gotten some useful and practical information. Make sure to like, rate, and review, and tell a friend or two. We'll be back soon. But in the meantime, find us on Facebook at the Holistic Healing Collective Podcast and support group. We'd love to see you. Take care, be well, and see you next time on the Holistic Healing Collective.